in this video, I'm going to highlight the 10 best features of the Kindle Scribe and how to use them. And if you're an Amazon Kindle veteran, some of these features might not be new to you. But just remember, there are many people watching this video who might be brand new to Kindles and e-ink tablets in general. So if you have any pro tips to share, make sure you leave those in the comment. Anyway, here's number one. One advantage that the Amazon Kindle Scribe has over other similar e-readers is its ability to adjust the color temperature from a bluish tint to a warm orange tone. And it also has backlighting for brightness as well. And I'm sure you already know this, but too much blue light can disrupt your circadian rhythm and make it hard for you to sleep at night. So the first feature and my first word of advice to you is that you become familiar with how to manually adjust the brightness and the color temperature and how to set up a custom schedule so that it kicks in automatically. To do this, you need to access the settings on the device and no matter what page you're on, all you need to do to access this is tap the top of the screen and a drop down will appear. Then if you tap this downward arrow, you'll get more options. So here you can adjust the brightness and the warmth of the tablet. But what we're gonna to go to now is this, all settings. Here, we're gonna to go to device options and then display settings. And then here, warmth schedule. Now what I recommend you do here is set this to a couple of hours before you go to bed each night and a couple of hours before you wake up each day. And then you can set the custom warmth level that you want. Keep in mind, it's better to have warmer tones towards the end of the day, like I said before, because those bluish tones can disrupt your sleep. Now you could leave this on automatic, but I do believe the best thing to do is set it to manual because you know your sleeping pattern better than the tablet does. Number two, the Kindle Scribe has 32 gigabytes of onboard storage, which means you can download your audio books from Audible directly to it. And this brings me on to an advantage that the Kindle has. It's the ability to use Amazon's Whisper Sync. If you haven't heard of this, here's what it does. Let's say you're reading an ebook and your eyes start to get tired. With Whisper Sync, you can seamlessly switch to the audiobook version of that same book and it will carry on where you left off reading. And then when you come back to the ebook, it will be in the exact place you stopped listening to the audiobook. So if you're doing some long distance traveling and you just want to look out the window for a little while, you can listen to the spoken word and then come back to the text whenever you're ready. And Amazon's Whisper Sync makes it easy to do. So scribe derived from the Latin word scriber, meaning to write. And that's why Amazon have called this the Kindle Scribe because you can indeed write with the magnetically attached pen on the side. When it comes to eBooks at this point in time, you can highlight by running the pen over the words to select them. And then you can add your own handwritten sticky notes to those phrases and paragraphs. These notes are then represented by this little icon on those pages. And you can also type out the notes using the keyboard if you prefer. And the great thing about this is that you can recall these notes later. To do this, tap the top of the screen, tap the notepad icon, and this will show you your highlights with the notes attached. And if you want to, you can tap the word highlight and it will take you exactly back to the page where you took the note. So take note of this annotation tool. It is a useful one. Number four. So I don't know about you, but I like to sketch from time to time and for no apparent reason, and I'm not particularly good at it either, but I do find it fun. And the scribe really isn't designed to be an artistic instrument, but then neither were cave walls. Anyway, I like the fact that you could sketch art on the scribe and you could even use it to be more productive if you want to and draw diagrams or platograms like the one that got me fired from Harrods and thrown out like Jazzy Jeff in The Fresh Prince. True story, I'll tell it to you one day. Anyway, with these drawings, once you're happy with them or your planograms, you can export them as PDFs via email. And that I believe is a good feature. So one new age old problem is signing PDFs digitally. This is something I have to do quite often. And the Kindle Scribe actually makes this process of hand signing documents much easier. So I do think this is going to be useful for you too. So write this down, go to amazon.com forward slash send to Kindle. Here you can simply drag documents from your PC or your Mac and they will appear in your Amazon Kindle library. You can now open them on the Kindle Scribe and then using the pen, you can sign the documents and it's easy to do. Once you've signed the document, tap the top of the screen, hit the square again with the outward arrow. And again, you can share this via email with up to five people. And another way to get the documents onto the Kindle Scribe is to send them directly through the Amazon Kindle app on your smartphone. And to do this, all you need to do is find the file on your phone and then hit the share button, then select share to Kindle. 
This will add it to the library. And then once again, you can open it on the scribe, sign it and send it. A very useful tool, if you ask me. Now, something else that I think could be extremely useful on the Kindle Scribe is the ability to mark up and write annotations directly on PDF documents and then being able to share the marked up version of those PDFs with other people. And this one's pretty much identical to the previous tip, but a different use case. So what I'm gonna do as well as showing you how to mark up a document is show you some tips for how you can use the pen. To get this to work, you must use the send to Kindle method. And for some reason, if you use a USB wire to transfer documents, it doesn't work. So here's some tips for marking up with the pen. Keep in mind, it isn't pressure sensitive. You can adjust the stroke thickness though. And you can also switch to highlighter mode and change the thickness of the highlighter. Once you're happy with your annotations and highlights and sketches, you can then send the document the same way we did with the other previous tips. And remember, if you want to annotate a Word document, you must first export it to PDF, then send it to the Kindle. Okay, something that's currently unique to the Kindle Scribe is of course the pen functionality. It's actually a Wacom stylus. So this means you can use other Wacom styluses on the Kindle Scribe. And if you're wondering if the Scribe comes with replacement tips, it does. There is a little pack of five in the box. But here's some tips I wanna share with you on the Scribe. Touch the top of the screen, go to all settings and then pen and then pen shortcuts. Here you need to make a choice as to what the side button on the pen does. So choose the most useful feature for you. I think if your primary use case for the Kindle Scribe is reading eBooks, then the sticky note shortcut would be the most useful. However, if you're getting the Scribe to primarily mark up PDF documents and take notes, then you might wanna consider using the highlighter tool or the pen shortcut tool. And I didn't mention this yet about the pen because there are actually two different models of the pen, but the one I have here has an eraser on the back. So if your pen looks like this, this means you can use the opposite end of the pen to erase things, which means there's probably no reason mapping the button to be an eraser. So just be aware of that. And if you don't have this eraser functionality on your pen, maybe you might wanna set that side button to be the eraser. So listen here real quick. I think a very good use case for the scribe is as a replacement for that dusty old stack of notepads. The screen surface texture is very paper-like and the writing experience is best described as lifelike. And you can see that the Kindle team have paid close attention to detail by adding rubber feet on the back of the Kindle scribe so it doesn't slide around when it's flat on a desk. Something I really like about the Kindle scribe is the ability to create folders and individual notepads within folders and the templates that are available are very useful. So if you're doing maths or writing notes or even setting up a diary, you can do that here using the preset templates. And here is a must do tip in my opinion. Tap the top of the screen, hit the little icon with the small A and the big A, and then go to more and enable the page turn animation. Also, it might sound like a stupid thing to do, but actually you'd be wise to turn on the word wise tool. So if there's ever a word you don't recognize within a bit of text, you can find out what that means pretty quickly. And the reading experience is gonna be first and foremost for most people. And I will say it's as comfortable as ever. And it gets even better when you add the official cover case, the fabric cover from Amazon, which allows you to angle the Kindle scribe towards you when rested on a desk. And there's also a loop at the base of the cover. So you can actually fix the pen to the device more securely if you're gonna throw this in a bag or something. And I think Amazon has prioritized functionality over form when it comes to the design of the scribe. Extending one of the bezels outwards as a grip means that you don't obstruct any of the screen when you're holding this with your hands. And it also means there's probably more space inside the device for a bigger battery, which takes me nicely onto one of the best features of the Kindle scribe. It truly has a powerful battery. Up to 12 weeks is what they say, which means you'd only need to charge this four times a year, but this is a best case scenario. And it's not gonna be the case for most people, but here's some tips to get you to that 12 week battery life. Tap the top of the screen and turn off auto brightness. And now dial down the brightness to zero. Also go in and switch off the Bluetooth settings. And if you wanna take it up another level, switch on airplane mode because this will switch off Wi-Fi so your device won't be searching for Wi-Fi signals 24 seven. And that should do the trick. So here's a little bonus tip for you guys to help you skip to the good bits in eBooks. Thanks to Kindle's user base, when lots of other people highlight sections within the eBooks, the Kindle actually highlights these sections for you and you can actually navigate to these very quickly if you want to. To do this, tap the top of the screen, hit the three broken line symbol here, then you'll see the popular highlights tab, tap on that. And here are a collection of some of the best bits 
according to other readers of this ebook. And tapping on these sections will take you exactly to those locations in the ebook, and maybe this can save you time. And as you know, nobody can give you your time back. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you'd like some more advanced tips and tricks for the Amazon Kindle devices, let me know in the comments. And if you need some tips and tricks for your smartphones, maybe these thumbnails on the screen might be of some use to you. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Don't be late.